Hello my little foodies, we are in Midtown Manhattan and we are about to go to the oldest and first Japanese market in America. It is called Katagiri and it was founded in 1907, um, which you know is pretty late for American history, but it's the first official Japanese market that existed in the US. I'm very excited. Um, Walker and I have been there once before to make our own sushi and that was a lot of fun because they have all of the different materials between the sushi wrap, the seaweed, the fresh um, like um, sushi that you can use for sashimi um, and it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> I, I visited Japan a couple years ago. I went alone for a month and if I could pick one food in the world that I will only eat and I have to get rid of everything else, it would be Japanese food. So coming to this market and seeing all of the different drinks and snacks and, and foods that I ate a lot at in Japan was just great. Um, and it was very authentic, obviously, because it's a Japanese market and one of the first in America. So come along and we are gonna get some goodies. It's like 31 degrees out here today. Freezing cold. As you can tell, Brenda's running right now to get to the grocery store. I think it's the coldest day of the year. I'm like pretty sure. <laughs> I love these. At, when I was in Japan, you would go to Family Mart or you would go to 7-Eleven and that's where I would get these. They're so good. It's such a good snack. And the way that they um, package it makes sure that the seaweed stays very crispy. I'm trying to decide what flavor I want. When you go to get pokey and they put the furkake on, on it, this is what we get. I have a couple of these flavors and it's so good when you make your, your rice at home and you just throw some for coffee on it gives it a lot of flavor. So these are usually filled with red bean paste or custard. Um, they're so good. I wish I wasn't watching what I was eating. These are sushi, sashimi that you can sit and make your own sushi with or cut it up yourself or eat it like a steak. <laughs> but this is what we use in order to make our own sushi even have the this oh I'm gonna get this. this is my favorite so good basically it's an egg omelet with sugar don't knock it till you try it that's all I gotta say these are so good they're just like little thin layers of cake with like butters and creams in the middle oh my god look at this one that one's so My favorite drink in Japan. So good when you're a hot day, hiking up the mountain to go see a temple and you have that out of an ice cold vending machine. Literally, literally the best thing in the world. Like nothing beats it, not even water. I want this one. This, bro, this one's pretty, but I like this. I'm getting that one. I always leave this place happy because, listen, I held myself back. Normally I would be out of here with like two full bags of snacks because I love Japanese snacks, like literally diehard fan. Um, but I leave happy because I know it's fresh and I know it's gonna be great. So let's go eat. Wagyu beef, yes. So we got something warm because, you know, it's cold outside. And I feel like $12 is an appropriate price. It is a little more expensive, but remember it is New York um, in Midtown at that. And I can't wait to get a first look. I've never gotten anything hot there. There we go, it smells good. That egg looks perfect. Um, 
right off the bat, I'm looking for Wagyu, which means I'm looking for a lot of um, marbled fattiness. And this is definitely giving me like roast beef vibes, but not the Wagyu that I generally think. Let's, let's taste it. It's cold. I wasn't expecting this to be cold. Mmm. It's soft and has really great flavor. I like it. But it is cold, so I wonder if it's supposed to be warmed up here. And then there's a pickle. This pickle looks cute. Wow. Really good pickle. It's sweeter. I let Walker taste it, too. It's a sweeter pickle. It's good. Right? And it's not made with, like, um, white wine vinegar. It's made probably with rice vinegar is what I taste. That's sushi rice. Nice and sticky and soft. Some onion. My favorite part. Oh, sweet onion. It's my favorite part. Mmm. The egg is seasoned very well. And this is a good, you know, if you're in New York and you're looking to pass by something and get like a very neutral, just regular meal that has authentic Japanese flavor, it's good. Mm. Mm. It's a little bit of sauce from the meat. It gets into that rice, really gives such great flavor. A little bit of saltiness. The scallions giving like a more of a bite and the sweet onions giving some sweetness. Very good. I'm trying it all together now. Mm. Delicious. It's good. Mm-hmm. Gotta save some for Walker. Yes, to be fair. Mm. <laughs> I love these. When I was in Japan, here watch the process. Don't look at me, you definitely wanna watch this. When I was in Japan, watch me do this wrong. I haven't done it in a while. Boom, tuck that back in. So it keeps the seaweed really fresh. It wraps the rice and puts the seaweed in between it. When I was in Japan, I just would literally go to 7-Eleven and they serve these at 7-Eleven and I would just eat this for breakfast because they're delicious. Anyways, this is made with like, um, it's a vegetarian version made with seaweed and plum and plum jelly. And it's really good. There's a plum. The seaweed has a great bite, beautiful saltiness with a really soft um, sushi rice. And then the plum on the inside gives a nice vinegar flavor to it. Maybe because it's earlier in the day, the plum is a little vinegary for me right now. Yeah. All right, so these beautiful pieces of fish with the fish eggs on it, seaweed and rice, that's what we're working with right here. So let's just try some, and I don't know, it says a fish, and it looks like there's definitely salmon, um, yellowtail, and I'm not quite sure what this white fish is. It's a much meatier, car not cartilage texture, but Imagine eating cartilage where it's like very solid. It has a much more solid texture to it, which is very interesting, but very fresh tasting. I'll tell you that much, is a seaweed. Mmm, I love seaweed salad. Let's put it all together. Try and get some rice from the mound. There we are. Mmm. really good so right. fresh just so fresh it's so good guys the fish tastes very fresh there's a little bit of spice to it here's my ginger i kind of just threw it in there because we're in a car um and there's a little bit of spice and it's like a little spicy mayo on top of it and just like a bunch of sashimi cut up small and thrown into it's like a poke bowl but much more focused on the fish and seaweed and the rice. I mean, the rice is just so good. I want to know what this is. You can see the layers in it. It 
So this isn't like their egg omelets and it's basically, if you look really closely, you can see the layers of it. And it's a sweet egg. Mm. It's like desserty, and it's often served in like different sushi platters. And I've tried it for the first time in Japan. I love these. They're so good. They're like two dollars if you don't eat meat but you eat eggs. This is a go-to. It's very good. Very good with rice. Mm. Good. <laughs> it's so good. It's like dessert. There's not red bean paste. Tastes like um, tapioca, like bubble tea pearls, but the tapioca flavor, mm, really good. If you love bubble tea and you love the tapioca pearls inside of bubble tea, then you'll love mochi. Oh, no. Someone's trying to get our spot. We'll, we'll be moving soon. Anyways, I love squishy stuff. I love soft and squishy things. Um, I don't know why, because my father hates it. I'm pretty sure my fiance doesn't like, so he likes crunch. I'm like not a crunchy type of gal. Like this is right up my alley. It's just so squishy. It's like so much fun to eat. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's very sweet, very soft. And then the inside of this one in particular has that tapioca sweetness flavor within it. Usually it's a, a red bean paste or it's um, a sesame filling or it's a matcha filling, whatever it may be. It yeah, adds just another dimension to the flavor of the mochi. Thanks for coming to Katagiri with us. Remember, it is the oldest and first Japanese market in the US, which is really exciting. And it's right here in Manhattan. So lucky for us. Um, the old charm of this place, that all of the different snacks and ingredients and rices and fresh sushi, sashimi, all of these things are what makes it just a little golden gem right here in Manhattan. It was pretty busy today. The last time I went was right at the height of COVID and it was empty, which is nice because I was roaming around, looking at all of the shelves and just really soaking it all in and living in the glory of what that shop is. Um, but I definitely recommend to check it out. I definitely recommend to like, do not hold back, go ham. If you look at something and you're like, I have no idea what this is get it that's the most fun part that's why I love food I'm always trying something I've never had before or don't even know what it is and then I love it and then you got to learn how to make it because then you're obsessed with it and then you're like cooking it and all of a sudden you're just eating good and that's 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 the deal that's why I'm here because I want everybody to eat good but on that note follow us make sure that you hit the little bell icon so you know when we have a new uh, video uploaded and follow me on TikTok, on Instagram on Twitter on Facebook, www.foodiebunk.com, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!